Hi, welcome to the next assembly video for the RepRap Perugia Mendel Iteration 2. In this video we're going to install the software and the firmware that we need for the printer board electronics. Um, now I am going to be recording another video for the ramps electronics. So if you need to watch that video, it should be the next one in the series. Okay, so let's get started. First we need to download a few programs and um, also a, um, a test object. So let's open up uh, Internet Explorer or Google Chrome or Firefox, whatever you prefer for a browser. And let's do a search for Arduino. Zero twenty-two. And this will be the software that we're going to use um, to actually create the image that we're going to burn onto the microchip on the printer board. Click on the Arduino software uh, link here that points to Arduino.cc main software under English. Now the first. Um, the first item available for download here on the page is going to be Arduino 1.0.2, which would probably work for this, but I know that the 22 version is going to work, so go ahead and scroll down to the previous IDE versions and then download um, the Arduino 0022 for Windows. We're going to save this to the desktop, and um, we're not going to we're not going to install it yet. Um, we're just going to download it for now and we'll do the installation later. So let's go ahead and finish downloading everything else we need. So go ahead and go back to Google. And the next thing we're going to need is the firmware and for this demonstration we're going to use the Sprinter firmware. Um, the Marlin firmware from what I've read would work for the printer board as well. So you could download, download that and try that if you want to. But if you want to follow along in this video it's going to be easier if you download the Sprinter software. So for this, the first hit is the Climate Sprinter at the GitHub, and this is Climate's software, so let's go ahead and click on that first link to download it. At the GitHub website, we can click on the Downloads link on the right side of the page, and then click Download as Zip. And again, let's just go ahead and save this to the desktop, and uh, we'll open it up later. Now let's go back to Google, and the next thing we're going to need is a program called Teensy Duino. This is going to be the driver for the um, for the USB uh, port on the printer board. So it's uh, Teensy Duino. Oh, oops, oh, I have it spelled wrong. Okay. Okay, um, it looks like the first hit here is going to work. It's uh, pjrc.com. So go ahead and click on the download link. And then we're going to need it for Windows XP. So click on the Windows XP. And let's just go ahead and save it to the desktop. And go back to Google. The next thing we'll need is a program called Flip. More specifically, it's going to be 3.4.7. Sorry about that. I'm used to typing on a different keyboard layout. <clears throat> okay, and it is made by Atmel. And um, so go ahead and click on the first link there for Atmel Corporation. And then scroll down, and we should see a few download options here. Now, if you don't already have the Java Art um, Runtime Environment installed, you'll want to click on the second one here, which um, has it included. So again, let's go ahead and save that to the desktop and go back to Google. The next program we're going to need is called Pronterface. And this is another program that was written by Climent, and it's available on the GitHub. Now, if we downloaded the GitHub version, we would need to install Python in order to get it to run, since it's written in Python. Instead, if you scroll down to the, um, the README file, there's a link here where you can download the pre-compiled version for Windows, and that's going to be easier for this video, but um, if you always want to run the latest version of Pronterface, then it would be better to uh, run the Python version. 
So um, there's two links available here. We have the one for Windows and the one for Mac. So we're going to download the one for Windows, which is called Print Run. And it's working on downloading here. So let's go ahead and save that to the desktop. And we'll open it later. Go back to Google. I've seen a couple more things. Uh, the next program we're going to need is called uh, Slicer. And uh, this is spelled with a number 3 instead of an E. And it looks like the first link here is for the slicer.org. So let's go ahead and click on that. And uh, it says the latest version is out. And they have a download button right on the main page there. So go ahead and click on that. And we're going to want the latest version for Windows. And they have two available. One for a 64-bit operating system and a 32-bit operating system. So let's go ahead and download the x86. And save that to the desktop. Okay, and then one more thing we need uh, is going to be at uh, Thingiverse. We'll be using this later for calibration. And what we need is a 20 millimeter cube. Um, well, quite a few things come up here. So anyway, let's just try skipping to the last page. The one that's actually called 20 millimeter cube. And here it is right here by Engine Glue. So I already know that this is a uh, a perfect 20 millimeter cube, which is going to be good for calibration. Let's go ahead and click on the STL file here, and then save it to the desktop. Okay, that takes care of um, of all the software and everything that we're going to need uh, to get the electronics up and running. Um, now I want to show you one more thing, just for reference. This is for the um, for the printer board. If you go to the um, the uh, refwrap.org website slash wiki slash printer board with a capital P and no E, this is the page that uh, that gives you more information about the printer board. And then if you scroll about halfway down, it has the steps for loading the firmware, which is what we're going to be doing. Okay, so that takes care of all the software. Okay, now we need to um, extract the Arduino software. So go ahead and open up the zip file. And then you can drag and drop it to the desktop to extract it. Um, I already extracted it, so I have it here on the desktop. And um, next, uh, we need to install the Teensy Duino software. So go ahead and double click on that. It'll ask you if you're sure to run this. And I click Next. Uh, the first thing it's going to do is install the USB serial driver. Um, in this case, I've already I already have it installed. So go ahead and click on Next. Next, you need to browse to the Arduino software. I have it installed on the desktop, so I need to rebrowse to the desktop. Desktop, and then double click double click on the Arduino 0022 directory, and then click Next. It's going to ask me which libraries I want to install. Go ahead and click on All and then click Next, and then click Install. And now this is installing all of the Teensy Duino add-ons, which will be used in the Arduino software. OK, looks good. Next, uh, let's go ahead and extract the Sprinter firmware. So open up the Sprinter zip file, and then drag and drop or extract the Sprinter master directory out of the zip file. I'll put it here on my desktop. Now we can open the Arduino software. And I'm going to double, double check here under Tools, under Board. There should be uh, Teensy Duino options now. So you can select the Teensy Duino Plus Plus 2.0. When we installed the Teensy Duino, it put those add-ons in there. So. Now we can open the Sprinter software, so click File, click Open, browse to your desktop, 
browse to the Sprinter Master folder, and then Sprinter, and then double click on the first Sprinter fire, file. And go ahead and close the other window. Let's move this over so we, and expand it so we can see a little better here. First, let's start with the Configuration H file. The first thing that we need to do is find where it says Define Motherboard. We need to change that from 33 to 9. 9 here is the printer board Rev B at Mega 90 USB 1286. Okay? And let's scroll down and see if there's any other changes we need to make. Later, we'll be modifying these axis step per unit entries for calibration. We don't need to do anything there right now. Let's go ahead and change this to the 250,000 baud. And let's go ahead and turn on the SD initiation file. I'm just going to scroll through and check to see if there's anything else we need to change here. Everything looks good here so far. Okay, if you want to, you can change your max temp. Okay, that looks good. So go ahead and save the configuration H file. And next, we need to make a modification to the pins file. So click on the, on the drop down for the tabs, and then click on the pins.h file. And scroll all the way down to motherboard number 9, which is uh, right here, motherboard number 9. And we need to change the Y min pin to uh, 37, from 20 to 37. Um, there's actually a, a conflict um, on pin 20 with the SD card reader. So in order to use the SD card reader, we had to change the Y pin to 37. And if you followed along in the previous steps when, when I wired up the electronics, the way that I wired it was so that I could use the Y pin at 37. So you'll want to make sure that you change this. So go ahead and save that. Let me just double check and make sure the rest of these pins are okay here. Okay, okay that looks good. All right, um, now we have it. Uh, we have the board changed to TC Duino plus plus 2.0. Um, we need this to serial. Everything else should be fine here. So go ahead and click on File, or um, actually it's going to be Sketch and Compile. So it says down here that it's compiling. Once this is complete, it's going to put a directory in the Windows Temp directory, and uh, we're going to need to get, to get that here in just a minute. The Tizo Duini, Duini, uh, the Tizzi, uh pop-up can just be closed. You don't have to worry about that. It says it's done compiling, so let's click on Start and click on Run and type in um, ampersand t uh, t e m p ampersand and uh, hit enter and this will open up your temporary directory i like to sort by date modified and then you could scroll down and the first directory here is build 298 and the build directory is the directory that that has the rom that we need so i'm just going to drag and drop that to the desktop Now we can minimize the Arduino software, and um, next we need to uh, install the FLIP program. So let's go ahead and double click that, it's JRE FLIP installer. Okay, I already have it installed. So go ahead and uh, open up the FLIP program, which is FLIP 3.4.7, should be under your start menu programs. Okay, at this point, um, go ahead and connect your printer board to its power supply, plug in the micro USB cable, and then plug in the USB cable to your computer. Okay, and then what you'll need to do is you'll need to pull the jumper uh, from the pins in the center of the board and then hit the reset button on the printer board and this will um, this will put it into uh, to a mode that will accept a new ROM. And then click on the uh, microchip here in the Atmel software and then scroll down to 
AT90 USB 1286, click OK, and then click on the USB cable, select USB, and then click Open. Okay, I, for, I forgot to, uh, to reset the board. Um, I thought that just turning it on would reset it, but you actually have to hit the reset switch when you uh, remove the jumper. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, set it up for the Atmel AT90 here. And now I should be able to open it. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, um, next uh, click File and click Load Hex File. And now we need to browse to that build directory that we pulled from the temp directory. And then double click on this printer.cpp.hex file. And that'll load the ROM into the Atmel software. And now we can click um, the Run button. Make sure to click Blank Check to select everything here. And now we're flashing the ROM. So, shouldn't take too long. All right, it's complete. Okay, so you can go ahead and uh, close this program. Go ahead and put the jumper back on the pins in the center of the printer board. And hit the reset button. Okay, next let's go ahead and extract the, um, the printer face program under the print run zip file. Go ahead and extract that to the desktop. And then go ahead and run printer face. Now we need to change the uh, baud rate to 250,000. And uh, COM3 is probably the right COM port because I don't have any other COM ports here. Go ahead and click connect. And there we go. Now I'm connected to the printer. Now I'm just going to do some, some testing here by uh, trying to increase the Z axis by 0.1 millimeter. And I'm looking at the printer and I can see that it is moving up a little bit. And I'll try moving down. Now um, Pretty much what you want to do is do this for all the axes and then also um, manually depress these end stop switches to make sure it stops the printer from moving. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, the Z-axis looks good. The end stop switch stopped it from moving, which is what, what I needed. Now I'm going to go ahead and try the X-axis. Okay. Okay, the X axis looks good. The X axis looks good. So we're going to go ahead and test the y-axis.
Oh, okay. I actually noticed that um, I had originally put the uh, y-axis in in the original location on the printer board, and uh, because I made that modification in the software, um, it wasn't working. I realized that actually. Um, so I'll show you that in the calibration video as to where you're supposed to put that. Um, you need to put it on the on the E stop instead of the Y stop pins. So it's pretty easy to figure out actually. But uh, I forgot to show you that in the previous video. I'm sorry about that. But all my axes are working. Everything looks good. So um, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect from the printer face. Okay. Now, the next step is to go ahead and do some calibration. And I'm going to separate that into another video. But um, at this point, the printer is working and everything looks really good. So um, let me go ahead and finish up with the software here. And um, let's extract the slicer program to the desktop. And go ahead and run the slicer program. Okay, and this is where you're going to be taking your STL files and converting them to G code so that your printer can read them and, and print files. Um, now we may we downloaded the 20 millimeter cube for an example, and we'll be using this for calibration later. You can just drag and drop this into the program. You can see it shows you an example of where it's going to print on the printer. And there's lots of different settings to go through here. Um, some, some of the more important ones is the layer height, for example. You might want to change this to 0.3 for a 5 millimeter, a 0.5 millimeter nozzle. And then um, you can go through and you can check the infill, the speed, and uh, there's plenty of different settings here. And if you go to the Slicer website, they'll explain what all these different settings are for. You need to make sure that the filament diameter is correct. In this case, I'll be using 3 millimeter filament. If you're using 1.5 millimeter, you need to change that to 1.5. And uh, there are settings here for the fan. And um, you can change your, your print center. And uh, you can also add custom G code if you need to. So it's a pretty handy program. And there's, there's plenty of information on the web. Um, that explain how to use this program and if you have any questions you can also go to uh, the rep wrap um, chat room on IRC so in order to uh, export this just click on the export G code button and then choose a location I'm just going to save this to the desktop okay now that that's on the desktop um, you can go ahead and load that file into Pronterface so click load file, browse to the desktop, and then open the G-code file. And it loads it into the G-code file. And at this point, um, once, once the printer is calibrated, it's very important to do the calibration first before you print anything, because it can really screw things up. But um, at this point, you could go ahead and, um, and, and print this out. To print it, you just uh, click on the print button when you're connected to the printer. Okay, um, in the next video, I'm going to go over um, testing the hot end, uh, testing the heat bed, and then also calibration so that we can start printing. Thanks for watching.